Hey everyone, this is our first video where we're going to do a little bit of theory. And today we're going to talk about when uh, the mass of a spring is no longer negligible. So far, and probably in your classes, what you've been doing is modeling different systems and always neglecting the mass of a spring or assuming that it is a massless spring. Well, that's true. But if we consider, let's say, the kinetic energy of the system over here, the real answer is that the kinetic energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy of the spring plus the kinetic energy of the block. And probably what you've been doing is always saying that, right, but let's say that this is equal to zero. And that's a fair assumption, but the condition is that the mass of the spring is much, much smaller than the mass of the rest. Now, if let's say you're modeling precision instruments where the mass of the entire system is very, very small and you have a few springs in there, well, you know, the masses of the springs aren't going to be negligible. And if a phenomena such as vibrations or something like that is happening and you need to study it, then you can't simply assume that uh, the spring is massless. Uh, in, in other cases, it's just that the springs are very, very heavy, such as in the, the suspension of uh, some um, trucks or heavy machinery. And there are also other examples where you can't do that, but these are the two ones that I could think of off uh, the top of my head. So let's say that what we wanted to do is to have a new system that will take into account the value of the mass of the spring. And we will say that this system is equivalent and so it has an equivalent mass. Furthermore, let's stretch the spring by an amount Z. You could choose whatever you want, but let's say Z. Um, another assumption that we're going to make is, and it's always important to list them, is that the stretching or the elongation is uniformly distributed. All right, why are we even saying this? Well, the kinetic energy, oh, let's switch back to blue. The kinetic energy of the system is equal to one half times the equivalent mass, which we don't know what it is, times the velocity squared of that mass. But we have a problem, and the problem is that there's no single value that we can give for the velocity. And the reason is that it's not constant throughout the system. Why is that? Well, to give you some intuition as to why that is, let's look at different particles along the spring. So let's put one here, let's put one here, and let's put one here. Actually, that's a bad choice, but let's just cut it. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's do that. 
let's divide this spring into three parts. So we're going to have one part, a second part, and then a third part. Now, if the elongation or the stretching is uniformly distributed, the first part is going to stretch by an amount, z over 3. The second part is also going to stretch by an amount, z over 3. And so is the third part. Now, if we think of it in terms of displacement, and actually let's create a displacement function as a function of x, which is the distance between the attached end to some point on the spring. Okay, let's take the reference points that we did before. We have one here. These guys are the same. And we had one here. And these guys are also the same. Okay, so by what amount did point number one move? Well, that's simple. It, displacement is equal to um, z over 3. And we are at the position l over 3. All right. Um, by what amount did point number two get displaced? That's 2L over 3. Well, it's the sum of the first amount of stretching plus uh, the second amount of stretching. And so that is 2Z over 3. Okay, cool. And so you get the point, the displacement at x equals l is equal to z. So what does our stretching function, or rather displacement function, looks like? Well, we have two things to consider. Number one is that the displacement at 0 is equal to 0, and the displacement at l is equal to z. Okay, well, I would say that the displacement as a function of x is equal to x over l times z. Let's try it out. Let's say that the displacement at 0 is equal to 0 divided by l times z is equal to 0. And that's good. And the displacement at, uh, let's say, L over 3, that is L over 3 divided by L times Z is equal to Z over 3, and that is also good. All right, so we do have a function of displacement. And why do we want that? Well, we want that because if we take the derivative, that's going to give us the velocity of a particle at a point on the spring, along the spring, rather. OK. Now let's consider some element of the spring um, that has a length of dz. What is its kinetic energy? Well. The kinetic energy of this spring, or differential element of the spring, is equal to 1 half times the velocity squared times its mass, dm. So if it has a length dz, then its mass is dm. But what what are they? What, what's 
delta dot. And what's dm? That's what we're going to deal with next. Number one and number two. Number one. What is delta dot of x? Well, it's simply the derivative of x times z over l. Because remember, z is a constant amount of stretching, and l doesn't change because it's the initial length. OK, what about number 2? Well, the mass is probably, intuitively, we can think of it simply as the mass per unit length times the length. What's the mass per unit length? Well, it's the mass of the spring divided by its length times, rather, I should say, displacement, just so that we're stretching. By what is the stretching amount? Well, that's dz. So we have dm is equal to dz. OK, so we have two expressions that we are going to feed into our kinetic energy expression. Just going to make boxes around them to show how important they are. Let's make a little bit of space. And let's copy this guy. Whoops. Don't know what happened there. Box is missing at the bottom. There you go. Okay, so, well, that is equal to one half times the new expression that we found for the velocity x dot z over l squared, don't forget the square, times the mass of the spring over its length multiplied by dz. OK. So we don't just want the kinetic energy of a differential element of the spring. We want the kinetic energy of the entire spring. So we're going to integrate along its length. So the integral from 0 to L of 1 half x dot z over L squared times the mass of the spring divided by L. And we're going to bring dz out. So the integral looks like something that we can work with. All right, that's pretty easy. So we're going to have 1 half x dot squared divided by L squared multiplied by the integral of z squared is z to the third power divided by 3 multiplied by the mass divided by L and all of that evaluated at 0 and L. And that's equal to 1 half multiplied by the mass of the spring divided by L to the third power multiplied by Z3 over 3 0 to L 
And so you have one half times the mass of the spring. We're going to substitute L into Z. So we get L to the third power. And I kind of forgot one guy here. Forgot the velocity. Don't forget the velocity squared. And so L3 divided by 3. So these guys are going to cancel out. Good. And what you're finally left with is 1 half times the mass of the spring. And that's the kinetic energy of the spring. Okay, divided by 3 times the velocity squared. So the kinetic energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy of the spring plus the kinetic energy of the block. And that's equal to 1 half times the mass of the spring over 3 times the velocity squared plus 1 half the mass of the block times the velocity squared. With a little algebra, we'll see that that's equal to the mass plus a third of the mass of the spring times the velocity squared. And that's your equivalent mass. What does that mean? Well, if you have a system like this, you can approximate it as this system with an equivalent mass with an equivalent mass that is equal to the mass of the block plus a third of the mass of the spring. And, well, as you probably already know, this will have an impact on the response of the system to some uh, outside force. And in the future, we're going to do a video where we'll look at uh, the impact of this. So thanks for watching. If you want the PDF of this uh, proof or worksheet, then uh, it's available in the description below. And thanks for watching.